scientists have successfully restarted the Large Hadron Collider in an attempt to make history for the second time. Three years ago, the huge particle smasher uncovered the Higgs boson, an elementary particle that gives other particles mass. Now they hope a more powerful version of the collider might discover dark matter and even extra dimensions in space. So this morning I'm going to preach you a message about something that is happening right now while you're sitting in this auditorium. It's in CERN, Switzerland. Now you may not be aware of what's going on over there, but there's a thing over there that's called a Large Hadron Collider. And it is an accelerator. It accelerates particles and then brings them to the point of collision. So this Large Hadron Collider was started up just a few days ago and is still in the initial process of being brought online completely. You say, what in the world does something like that have to do with me and the Bible? It has a lot to do with you and the Bible. It's 2015. The church is dead and asleep. The only, the only way you can, the, the only crowds you have in this country today are the crowds that are pumped up by rock and rap, and it's all about love, self love, and positive attitudes, and you know, money and me, myself and I. I'm in love with me, I'm, up, I'm in love with myself, and I'm in love with I. And your wife says, I know you are, and that's why I'm leaving. <laughs> that's the truth. You ought to write a book about 15 ways to love yourself. It'd sell like you wouldn't believe. Absolutely. That's all it is. It's a joke. Just a big joke. You know that. It's just a big joke. All right. You've got the people to the point to where they can be moved emotionally, not intellectually, but emotionally. Anything stirs people today. They got crowd mentality. They got mob mentality. Can you imagine something that has created earthquakes, that has made apparitions appear, that you've got scientists warning, don't do this, you don't know what you're going to unleash? Maybe there's a greater purpose in all of that that they're not even aware of. He's called Satan. Maybe he intends to bring chaos on this earth. Chaos. And you know the old thing? What's the, how's it, how does it go? Abba. Uh, What's the term? Order out of chaos. The earth is in a turmoil and it's blazing and burning and then the peacemaker shows up. To fit in to the great deception that's coming and it's coming and it's about here right now. I mean a deception like this world has never known before. To fit in to this great deception, they can sure draw these men in to make them think that because they have reached this certain point in their scientific analysis, that they're bringing in these spirit beings. It'll make true believers out of them. NASA said just a few days ago, NASA, they said just a few days ago that by the year 2020, that we will definitely come in contact with aliens, beings from another planet. Now we're talking about scientists. We're talking about Darwin's crowd. We're talking about the crowd that threw the Bible out and said it's old, archaic, anachronistic. It doesn't belong today. We're talking about that bunch. We're too smart for the Bible. We're scientists. Yet this crowd is saying that in just a few years that they're going to know, that they know that they're going to come in contact with alien beings. I thought to myself, my, 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 my. You boys, have you, already, have you always known that? That you've got a certain date set? But we were told when Darwin's theory of evolution came out and became vogue, that it would destroy the foundations of Christianity. And this old book that we hold in our hands, this old outdated Bible, would no longer be relevant. And a lot of people bought into it. Because after all, Darwin is scientific. But it's an amazing thing now that 150 years later, we have some of the greatest scientists in the world that are becoming very religious because here they've got Shiva, they've got dances to Shiva, and they are definitely being connected with Shiva as they're finding things. Let me give you one example. In one of their collisions, when they collided these particles together, they saw things. They were apparitions. They didn't expect to see, and they didn't fit in any model. They didn't fit anywhere. 
They don't belong, but they, they could not deny the reality of it. Something was going on inside there that they could not explain. And it was scary for them. For the scientist has his paper and his pencil and his books, and if it doesn't fit in his paper and his pencil and his books, it's out the window. They don't understand. They have a hard time accepting the fact that there is a spirit world out there. That spirit world was created by a spirit being. An almighty, eternal, absolute being that is from everlasting to everlasting who put in me what I am today by the power of Almighty God and by the power of the new birth. I want you to think about what I'm saying. Stephen Hawking, and a theoretical physicist, has warned these people, you are about to open Pandora's box. And once you open Pandora's box, you cannot, put Pando you cannot put back in what came out of that box. Remember, he's an atheist. He doesn't believe in spirits. He believes that what they're liable to do here in CERN, Switzerland, is unleash the gates of hell on this earth. The reason I took you to Revelation is because in the ninth chapter of Revelation, what you just read is the gate of hell. And what you think is an alien being is really a demon? There are no aliens out there, folks. Forget that stuff, okay? There's nothing out there. There's nothing up there. All these UFOs, spacecraft, flying saucers, all this stuff, that's all demonic. It's real, but it's demonic. It's not real like we understand reality, but it's really real. <laughs> it's demonic. I see a great deception beginning to develop. Yeah. Yeah. That in their analysis and in their laboratories that they believe in, that they've got their heart and soul tied up in, little things begin to show up, stuff that they can't explain, that sucks them in to begin to understand, well, maybe this is, a, this is being affected, it's being acted upon by something that we don't understand completely. And this spirit being that comes from out there, that comes down to this world, they accept with open arms because they're willing to put Shiva out there dancing around in the cosmos and destroying and then bringing a new creation creation in. Here are these wise, smart, brilliant men. And they're willing to believe that there's something more than what can be measured in a microscope and can be put in a petri dish. That there's something going on. And you better believe there is. There's something going on. What would be a greater ruse than to use their science and their technology to suck them in? to accepting some spirit being coming from somewhere up here, some alien, down to this earth, and do it through a collider over here. This is as high a technology I suppose you got on this earth. And do it through that, and bring it down upon this earth, and bring it into people. Now here's one of the things about this. This, this, this antimatter called dark matter, and dark matter, <coughs> has energy attached to it. And the energy affects people. It affects them. And remember, when you produce antimatter, you gotta contain it. Because if you don't contain it, you gotta contain it. That's the biggest problem, containing it. Because if you don't contain it, it just goes wild. And they don't know what it's liable to do. Now folks, go check me out. Go check me out, I, I want you to. Go check me out this afternoon and see what it says about antimatter. And it'll say yes. You better contain it because you don't know what it's liable to do. But they do know this. From what they've experienced so far, it has an effect on people. Dark matter has an effect on people. It causes some people to go screaming mad. It controls people. It is an, it is an enormously powerful thing. It's pulling something out of hell that you don't want any part to do with and turning it loose on mankind. Now, you know, I don't know that. <laughs> I don't have ever been in agreement with an atheist before, but I'm in agreement with this one. <laughs> I and Mr. Hawking see it the same way. They better leave that stuff alone. The church is asleep, but the Lord's coming back. If I were, if I were, if I were 17, 18, 19 years old this morning, I'd be worried 
I've lived 68 years. I'm ready to go meet the Lord. The Lord comes get me. I'm gone. But you young people coming up and you want to start a family, you want to have children, you know, you got all your life in front of you uh, by the grace of God. And to hear about something over here that they can produce one gram of it has the potential of four atomic bombs. Uh, countries are building up their armament and so forth. Well, that's happening right now. It's happening right now. And that war is soon to come. There's going to come an Armageddon. There's coming an ap apocalypse. I hope you're ready. I hope you're ready. I hope you are. I hope you're ready to meet the Lord. How close could we be to the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ? How close could we be? How close? The church is asleep. But the Lord's coming back.